Sir! Boom! Direct hit! Greetings, friends, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program! Today, I'm doing another one of those sci-fi ships. This time, it's a Star Fury. Someone in the comments of the Viper Mark II video, I think before, said, Hey, how about a Star Fury from Babylon 5? An interesting fact, I've never seen Babylon 5. It's also not on Netflix, so I couldn't then go watch it. Which is kind of too bad, but the guy who suggested it, Brian Myers, another Kerbal Space Program YouTuber, actually, sent me the links to a few clips of it flying from the show, like YouTube clips, so I could kind of see it in action. I looked up a bunch of pictures, and here it is! Here it is, like the other ships that I made. It's not 100% accurate, but I'm using all stock parts, no mods, all stock, these fancy tools up here in the top left to kind of adjust things as needed, and the focus was kept on uh, minimizing parts, Without these weapons here, it's actually under 100 parts, so minimum of parts and also a minimum of cost. So even fully decked out like this, it only costs 50,000 funds, and that's enough realistically to use in a career mode game. Also fun fact, I'm putting all the, the craft files for all these ships now on Kerbal X. I'll put a link to that in the description. It's a, it's a website you can go and download craft files, then you put the craft files in your save, like in somewhere in your save file, I can show you how if, if people are interested. And then you can have the ship. You don't have to build it yourself. First, to show you how it works, let's strap it on top of a rocket and blast it into space. This is not an SSTO. It cannot take off from the ground. It just it just can't do it. Who are we gonna get to fly it? Huh, these are some weird names for Kerbals. Jojo, is that like a, a mononym? Like like Cher? Oh, if I was thinking, I would have put in a Babylon 5 flag. Oh well, live and learn. Alright, weird name Kerbal. Three, two, one, go! For being a random ship, I just stuck on the end of the rocket. This is sure a lot more stable than that food truck I launched into space. Here we are in space. Just let that space junk drift away. But check it out. Those Werner engines allow for some pretty nice control. And they even look kind of like the ones on the show. When they when they fire, they have like rockets and stuff. But they, they're positioned quite nicely for like moving left or right or pointing left or right, pointing up or down. It's really it's really quite a good design on the showmaker's part to make it kind of visibly work. The, the show definitely gave me uh, the opportunity to put thrusters in the correct places. But all right, we got we got to test out our weaponry. I'll just target that. That oh, looks like we're drifting away. Yeah, the problem is the, the thrusters all kind of point forward, so if you're using them a lot, they tend to push you backwards, which which isn't too bad. Let me get my engines going. Let's see, look, these engines have, have some decent thrust in, in space. Hmm. Why is one of them out of fuel? It, sh it shouldn't be out of fuel. Oxidizer deprived. I don't understand. All right, there is there's a glitch. There's a glitch in the matrix. For some reason, this one, this one engine, it doesn't think has any fuel, which is ridiculous because it's all the same. It must have been because I was messing around with engines before I launched. That was a dumb idea. I'll make sure it's fixed before I upload the craft file. Anyways, it's actually got quite a bit of thrust. See, we're going 18 meters a second relative to the target, and we accelerate quite nicely. But we also decelerate pretty nicely. If I use the thrusters to slow us down. See, it, it works It works pretty good both ways, really. So this this would be a very, very easy ship to dock, even though I guess you have to do it backwards because I put the docking board on the back. Whatever. But it'd be, it'd be quite quite useful. And, it, and the way it works with such little, uh, such little lag is quite surprising because a lot of these replica ships actually work pretty badly because they have hundreds of parts, especially the ones that look really good. The ones that look really good seem to lag the most. All right, here we're coming in hot. Switch to the inside. So you can use this for kind of targeting. When you have something targeted, there's the, the pink circle around it, and if you line up that dot in the middle with the pink circle, then the front of the ship is pointed at that. So let's see if I can fire something at it. And... Fire! Boom! Direct hit! Direct hit! That was pretty cool. Uh-oh, it's going to the left. See, these thrusters are really nice. They help me point, keep pointed. Alright, and... Fire again! Nope, missed. Here we go, I got three more shots, you see? I, I think I had I had five shots to begin with in this. Let's see if we can maybe get a cooler cooler cinematic angle. And three to one fire! Oh, I missed. I missed. Okay, well, I'm I'm not the best uh, fighter pilot in the world. You gotta give me a break. Fire again? No, I missed. I missed yet again. So far only my first shot was successful. Let's get a little closer. Maybe we won't miss if I'm point blank. Here we go. Get a little closer, closer, 
I'm really loving these thrusters because they can they can help me adjust my my trajectory and my angle so so easily and they can even slow me down really fast See if I'm coming in really really way too fast I just hit these ones and I slow right down slow right down to nothing very useful all right all right we're pretty much there it'd be pretty hard to miss from this close all right let's get lined up kind of eyeball it oh I see I'm targeting the edge of it kind of don't want to do that I want to kind of shoot at the body there we go that shouldn't miss that shouldn't miss in theory all right prepare to die spent rocket fuel tank boom I got it oh it didn't have enough power to blow it up oh well still looked cool right right please tell me it looked cool yeah, I, I do really like how this turned out. It looks quite nice in my opinion. This is not an atmospheric flyer. It's actually pretty terrible. When you re-enter, it flips around backwards. Unless, of course, you engage the air brakes. Then it kind of keeps it forward. Sort of, but not really. But when you get to space, you do have quite a lot of Delta V. I was quite surprised. 2600 or so? Like, it, you have to use something to help you get into orbit. Once you get into orbit, 2600 is a lot from orbit to get to somewhere. You could probably fly it to Minmus and back. And in fact, since Minmus doesn't have any air, you could probably land. You could take this thing land on Minmus, I bet, and then fly it home. It would be it would be quite a fun little challenge. But there, I'll, I'll post the link to the craft file. You can go get it. And stay tuned for a minute. I'll show you how to make these cool looking thruster things look more accurate. Here we are, back in the space plane hangar. But anyway, let me, let me just quickly show you. They don't have the right cockpit unfortunately, so I have to use this one that looks a little more like a TIE fighter, but it's the one we have. I use these nice efficiency engines, so we get decent Delta V, 2600 Delta V. We have a docking port on the back, in case you want to dock them to space stations or whatever. And for these these cool fins, I use the fancy air brakes. And I noticed the, the outside ones were always bigger, so I used two of them and moved them farther back to kind of hide the fact that they're exactly the same. So the, the real trick to this was getting these thruster thingies to look like the thrusters in the show. I mean, I could just could have just taken a, like a Werner engine and stuck it on on the ship, and it would have worked just as well. But the ones in the show stick out from from the tank somehow, and they have like a little cone thing, and then they have what looks like a circular like cannon front or like a jet nozzle or something. Uh, but I couldn't do that in this, so I I used a fuel tank. And in standard fashion, everything is useful. The fuel tank actually works to store fuel for the thrusters. Because this fuel tank, it's the right color, is the one on the show, but it holds rocket fuel, and these little engines burn rocket fuel, not thruster fuel, not monopropellant. I put two on the front because I wanted uh, I wanted to have eight pointing forward, a little bit more stopping power. It looks like the ones on the show had bigger thrusters on the front. And while these ones are the same size as these, I wanted the, the power to reflect that. So how do I get these to stick on? Well, you can't really stick the nose cone on somewhere. But you saw a node right there. The node is actually one of these, a cubic octagonal strut. So I stuck that on the end, then I used the offset to sink it into the tank, and then I put this on the end, this cone, use the offset again to sink that into the tank. And then I adjusted it left, right, up or down an angle to get it to be this kind of shape. So it looked sort of like this one. Anyway, and then I took the, the fuel tank here, the Oscar B fuel tank, which you can see is a larger fuel tank, and used the offset tool to sink it in. Then I use the offset tool to sink in the Werner thrusters a bit. I, I'm not sure I really like that, but that's what I did. Now to adjust the air brakes, I kind of did the same thing. I put them on the side, use the offset tool to move these ones back, use the rotate tool, this one, to angle them outward so they're kind of flaring out a bit to begin with. And that's really all there is. With the functioning cannons, I just made the same decoupler, small decoupler, arrow pointing inward with two separatrons on them on either side, and then I would rotate them, put another one on the end, change the staging so they'd fire at different times, rotate them, put them on the end, change the staging so they fire at different times, and that over and over again until I had five of them. And on the very last one, I stacked another Oscar B fuel tank. What this does is it adds a little bit more mass, so the, the little missile thing has a bit more punch when it hits. So that's kind of fancy. If you want to just imitate the cannons, try these, the surface scanning module. They look kind of like a cannon. I don't know. Plus they're useful. They're science. But there you have it. My Star Fury from Babylon 5. Available at Kerbal X. Link in the description. Go download it. And if you're not interested in weapons, you can have your very own Star Fury, I guess, for 45,000 funds, 5,000 less, and under 100 parts. Only 89 parts. Only 89 parts. That's very, very, very good on the lag. 
and it looks kind of like a Star Fury, and it flies. It flies pretty well. I'm sure you could even remove more parts if you took the air brakes off that don't do anything, you know? Download it, mess around, and have some fun. If you like this video, please leave a like, please leave a comment. If you want to see another ship, you want to suggest another ship, let me know. If you want to say, hey, good ship, let me know. It really helps me out. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe for more videos like this, Kerbal Space Program, and lots of other games. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye! And away! Grand Theft Auto Zombie Edition! Pull right, up! I'm just gonna come into town to oh, running guys. Get this R&D yeah. building! Uh-oh, uh-oh. Stuck. 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 I'm gonna get stuck. Run away! Yeah, I didn't hit anything! No, it's like I'm pushing my truck. Actually, actually I did. Not, it's definitely oh. not good. Alright, here we go. See if I can run down a deer. Sucker control tower. Sucker right? DAB. Come back, deer. Oh, I'm gonna eat ya. Bam! Can't pull up in time. Oh, 